So this is the article for today, easy to start, hard to master, the ultimate guide to sealed. This is uh, so uh, the, it's uh, it's uh, this is a uh, an article from 2019, so relatively recent uh, in Magic years, <laughs> uh, but written by Pascal Vierin. Uh, the the author seems uh, seems to have um, uh, performed quite well on sealed tournaments, um, and so he puts here a lot of effort, um, uh, a lot of effort into this article. These are uh, generic strategy that is applied to, to every sealed event that you might be participating a bit with a bit of effort, uh, with a bit of focus on paper tournaments, of course, because, well, I guess in 2019 those were more common. Um, but uh, but but yeah, th th there's a lot of juice uh, in, in this article for sure. I actually found it just um, like three three hours ago while I was reading a different one, more focused on Kaldheim. Um, and the the one on Kaldheim, you, you can actually track. I, I typically share this more specific stuff on my um, on my um, Discord. You can find the link via the Discord command. Um, so let's jump right in. Um, sealed is one of those formats that, at least for me, that it was the probably the first uh, format, competitive format that I played uh, because of prayer releases. Right? You typically go there, and you it's like the lowest barrier of entry. With you get six packs, and you start jamming. <laughs> you, st you just start jamming. Um, and but th there's there's a lot a lot a lot of depth that you can put. It's it's not as simple as you have a pre-made recipe that is apl applicable to every single uh, set. Um, so uh, and and there there are high payoffs from preparing well for a sealed uh, for a sealed event. Uh, either because you know you know how to best answer the the, the typical bombs, uh, either you you are already able to understand if games will go long, um, uh, and so on. Yeah, these are just some. You, you, you as always, you can take a look into the articles via the articles command that is available on your chat. Yeah, uh, it's already updated with with uh, with this uh, with this uh, article, um, and okay. So let's let's break let's start then breaking things down. Uh, sealed is composed by two parts. Uh, you build a deck out of those six booster drafts, and you you actually play the games, right? So there are there are two components that you should take into account that you should try to try to combine into a single uh into a single cohesive plan um let's start by discussing a bit the gameplay then um the uh, the, the meta game i may, i mean uh the meta game is as as you probably are already aware it's like the game outside the game right um it's all the the all the kind of uh, decision points, uh, decisions that, could do, that you can take outside the battlefield itself, right? Uh, either your deck of choice, uh, w uh, more, more, more specifically to sealed, what kind of cards are you valuing? Are you expecting um, to go to to have long games, short games, uh, go more aggro? Are, is aggro favored? Typically not. Um, so all, all of those, all of that stuff is uh, is meta game. There's actually another component. Um, yes, uh, of course, me this meta game, how you study meta game, and the, your meta game analysis and decisions all uh, try to seek to to improve your chances to actually win to to win the actual matches, right? Um, but meta gaming goes beyond beyond th those. Um, uh, th those limits. Uh, for example, if you know that your opponent is uh, is, is someone that um, th does not really value combat tricks, or if it's someone that uh, um, is typically un uh, underprepared for bombs uh, with with removal and other other answers in in sealed, that's also information that you can use. That's part of uh, that's part of your toolbox, let's say. Um. 
and th there are actually a few a few items here that I will try to to include into the um, uh, into the spreadsheet, the limited spreadsheet that I'm building. Uh, uh, th these are just a few questions that can drive your study before uh, jumping into a sealed event. Uh, so, how many turns do I expect a game to last in this format? Um, typically, in uh, in Kaldheim, it looks like uh, Kaldheim uh, sealed. It looks like it's around nine turns. Uh, for example, let's see here. Where it, where is it? Where is it? sealed call time it's actually a bit faster uh, no a, a, a tad uh, considerably slower than um than the draft format that you can see here let me just put this a bit bigger so these are the draft formats you see that they average at around 9.2 9.3 turns um and in call time um, in sealed, you get an average of 9.7, so actually closer to 10 turns. Um, by the way, on Thursday, if if everything goes according to plan, uh, we will be reviewing just a few a few of these 17 lands uh, resources that are available that can inform your um, your decisions during the arena open on the weekend. Um, and again, I, I'm also studying this, these things um, just just now. Uh, again, I found this article this morning. I, I'm using... Th th there's no better way to, to learn a subject than try to teach it, right? <laughs> so that, that's a strategy that I try to employ as much as possible. Um, and as a way for me to grow and as a way for, uh, for helping others to grow. Um, moving on. Um, what causes a game to end? Uh, tip, there are very strong, uh, very strong uh, bumps in call time for sure. Um, you will often lose a game for them, so you should be prepared. There, but there's also a lot of grinding, uh, right? There are a lot of small advantages and and keep and co being able to control your opponent not through the common tools for control or at least the common. Uh, tools that you uh, the, the kind of drago uh, um, control but more of uh, more of the type of um, tap out uh, control um, are early drops relevant in this format um, actually not really uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can typically do on your early turns there's there's not that much support for uh, an aggro strategy uh, because it's it's for the most part supported by red white and if you don't have a, a, a big enough pool of sheep creatures of those two colors uh, it will be really hard for you to to build um to build a cohesive deck of course, black is also works well in a Rakdos deck but um, it, it's it's it, if it's typically already hard for a sealed pool deck to um to be aggro it's it seems to be even harder on uh, on Kaldheim but if you can uh, that's that's definitely a way because your opponents will be foretelling stuff um, they will um, they will be playing uh, like uh, a mana fixing spells uh, low relevant stuff be, uh, up until um, turn three and sometimes inclusive turn three uh, is it important to do something in the early turns? It is definitely important to do something up until turn three. Otherwise, you might get run out or to do or at least have the possibility of doing. Otherwise, you might end up being ran out, uh, run over by, by aggro decks. Are there enough ways to keep spending mana in this format? So here we need to think about mana sinks uh, and particularly to the set equipment, boast. Uh, there's also a few dynamically costed cards I believe, or at least Nico Harris. I'm not recalling anything else. But uh, the Fortel cards also give you um, also give you some flexibility between playing them right now or foretelling and playing them later, right? Um, do both players usually cast all their cards, or does the game usually end with cards left in hand? I, definitely the first one. <laughs> um, 
because again uh, there's a lot of flexibility in you playing uh, playing your sp your spells even your six drops might end up being four drops uh, because of foretell what's the average size of creatures um so a, a, a relevant number to keep in mind here is for, uh, from four toughness up, uh, your creatures start to be considered uh, resilient. Um, so are already bulky enough to, to take a beating. Um, be, uh, lower than that, uh, it's very typical to have three twos, um, whatever two, uh, X twos, uh, generally speaking. A few cards have three toughness, uh, but those are the, the, the typical um, the typical creatures. Um, so you want you you still want ways to probably potentially take out those those cre those creatures like uh, deal three damage uh, like way down and and removal of the swords. But you also want to to, to have ways like more and uh, removal that is a bit more unconditional. <laughs> um, of course, the internet is full of creating uh, of people creating content, uh, and th and this is this is definitely something that I do a lot. I I, I watch uh, wh while I'm I'm eating something, I, I'm having a meal. I'm typically watching um, uh, a YouTube VOD uh, VOD where I'm trying to to understand what's the thought process behind the decision before the um, the streamer or the the content creator actually uh, explains it to me. Um, so because there's a lot of thought that comes into these articles, there's actually already discussed in the past CFB Pro. Pro, which has a bunch of uh, very very good uh, content creators uh, like the guys from Lords of Limited, Cordo Calls is always is also uh, uh, putting a lot of content in there. So there's a lot to to, to um, in the internet to to consume, and it's it's generally speaking very good content. Um, if you if you watch streams, <laughs> there's uh, there's here a tip. Make sure to watch people who don't just play the game, but explain their deeper reasoning. That this is something that I try to do. Not only because it helps me ensuring that I have uh, a plan at every single moment in uh, at every single moment of time, uh, but it helps everyone. And I I've been getting feedback that that's that's actually quite valuable and. The, it it feels like the most w watched streamers actually don't do this this that much, um, but that that's also why I I, I love to to watch Ben S uh, streaming and and his YouTube content. Um, so now regarding deck building, uh, again just to recap a bit here in this section we reviewed a bit the the meta game so the kind of preparation that you can. Can have. We reviewed some key points that you sh that you can um, look at and try to to focus your study on of a given set of a given format. And now let's let's jump into deck building. So this was pre uh, preparation. And now we are already uh, in the event, right? And regarding deck building, th there's there's already a bunch of stuff that we reviewed the last stream uh, on the sealed spreadsheet that I'm actually. Um, working to to improve a bit. Uh, let me just adding like so, some tips for uh, some tips for MTG Arena, some some stuff more related to sideboarding and all of that. Um, that's available via the command uh, sealed. By the way, uh, moving on to deck building. Rarely do players agree on the exact build of a sealed pool. So a seal building a sealed deck. It's actually very very tough. There's so many possibilities. It, I, I feel blessed when there's a single powerful deck that that brews from from a pool of six packs. Uh, just because uh, even even this Sunday, I was I had like uh, three uh, three um, sets of six packs, and now I, I tried to build three sealed pools. The first one went great. The second one, I spent like two hours thinking about it. And the third one also went reasonably well, <laughs> so uh, yeah, the, it's very rare for players to, to agree on, on the outcome of a sealed pool. Don't feel uh, bad if uh, if your decisions, uh, if you're afraid if, uh, that your decisions are might not be the most optimal ones. 
Um, but there's actually something good uh, from from doing this good in a way uh, because pressure from from playing on a paper tournament time pressure and all of that um is is also good to to, pr to for, for your brain to to develop um these strategies but yeah on arena you can take screenshots you can uh, easily swap things around and don't uh, don't give tells to your opponent that, uh, of what you're doing so everything is uh, everything all, all those uh, good things are um, available to you. Moving on, next problem. You only have a limited amount of time to build your deck. Again, this is this is more related to to paper. But again, take advantage of this, right? You you can think about a deck. You can, you can even discuss with it with other people, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that's on on, on the rulings, uh, but I I guess you can. Um, so that, that's that's something that you that you can do. But again, uh, generally speaking, I, I prefer to to incentivize practicing for the hardest case scenario. So um, there's there's a common saying in in martial arts and probably in other sports. Like if you if you train hard, the 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 fight is easy, right? Um, if, if you if you make it harder for yourself when you're practicing, you'll have a, a, a an easier time when you, when you're actually on a tournament. Um, uh, b b yes, exactly. So uh, an additional thing is, even though as we discussed previously, uh, sealed decks typically don't have that much um, that much synergy are more about raw power you still need to have a plan you still need need to to have a strategy um, to to actually deploy those threats to to actually answer your opponent's threats um, so it's it's important to to see not only and um, and you can you can rewatch that on on our previous stream on youtube uh, like it's not only about identifying where the bombs where the um, where the removal and where the, the, the mana fixing is. It's also about lo uh, understanding if, if you, the commons and, on, or the other cards are actually supporting that, uh, that deck. So, as, as everything in magic and in life, have a plan, okay? Define a plan because that's the first step to actually define shorter term goals to, to, um, to evolve. Uh, yeah, and this is something very, very usual. <laughs> you, you see this a lot. Um, and th this is a reason for you to, to actually value uh, removal highly. So people are underprepared for bombs. This is very, very, very common. People are uh, just, uh, or not as experienced players. Uh, I, I, I definitely recall me do, doing these sort of things, not really valuing the, the unconditional removal, even though if it's six mana or whatever, it can be huge for your game. Um, so yeah, uh, I definitely remember valuing the bombs, valuing creatures, having a good density of creatures, some pump spells or whatever, and then where are the the the, the answers for my opponent's gods or whatever? That, that's something that um, you, you should have answers. I, I know that there's there's these these threats versus answers um, dilemma where. Like, if your opponent has a threat and you have a threat, well, your threat is always... Having threats is proactive, having answers is reactive. You need to align your answers against your opponent's threat. So it's a bit difficult. That's why it's important to prioritize removal that is good everywhere. Eric, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining. How are you doing? Uh, so yesterday you were, you were playing on, on the on the SCG tournament, right? How, how did it go? Let us know. Um, hey, Rick. <laughs> nice to meet. Nice to see you, Oran. Um, crashed and burned. <laughs> well, so, sometimes that, that's how it goes. Uh, yeah, it's the, what I like after after a tournament like that. It's just have a good night of sleep. And next day I, I will feel I'll feel much better. I'll feel ready to, to tackle a, a few more games on Arena and actually start feeling good because I'm I'm winning or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes it's it's the best thing is to stop for a bit. 
But that's variance again. That's something that we 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 talk about it here a lot. Exactly. <laughs> that that's always a good escape route um, to to boost our ego, right? Let's let's pick mono red and go to the to the ladder. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, the, so the less your own deck has a plan to execute, the more your, your individual power level of your opponent's cards matter. This is, again, if you don't have enough, um, the, the fewer um, the fewer threats you have when compared to the average opponent, uh, the more you need to prioritize answers, right? Because you cannot simply, the, your opponent plays an, uh, a threat you and you play a threat. That, that, uh, you won't have threat, so you will lose that battle. <laughs> Burn them down! Exactly. Um, sealed isn't the same as a draft. There are very, very, very a, a lot of reasons for that, but um, there are some, some crucial differences to keep in mind. For example, since you, you see uh, you open three, uh, six packs uh, instead of three, virtually uh you generally speaking you have or uh, more often than not yes you have access to to more rares um so more good cards um or more broken cards as uh, in in the pa in the past few sets uh then um then on a draft um you also cannot control as much your pulled your pool solo tide welcome thank you for the following man how are you doing? Whoop whoop, <laughs> whoop whoop. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh, today, for the ones that arrived, uh, um, um, I'm today we're we're dedicating the the intro to review an article on general strategy for sealed events uh, because there's the arena opening uh, open coming in the next weekend. So today we'll do this, we'll review this article. By the way, it's available via the articles command. There's a bunch of articles available to you. You can also use the commands command <laughs> to, to check those out. But yeah, if you just look, articles, articles. Uh, you can, th th there's a bunch of stuff that I've been sharing on, on my previous streams. Feel free to take a look. Um, either way, uh, the, Today we'll review this article, next Thursday we'll review a, a, a few uh, analytics coming from um, 17 lands. <laughs> That's the spirit, Solotype. Growth mindset. This stream is all about growth mindset and um, and deliberate practice. Those are, I know those are seem like buzzwords, but if you kept, uh, sometimes buzzwords are really useful because you they're easy for you for you to keep keep themselves handy like in your front pocket or whatever of your mind uh, so you can recall them very easily you can adapt you can uh, use that uh, to, to for your daily decision making <laughs> but th thank you for for joining the um, the stream solo tie. that's really appreciated um Yes, so I, I was discussing uh, analytics next Thursday, and then we'll have the the that then we have the 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 thing during the weekend. So let me just check if I'll have a bunch of noise coming up. I hope not. I'll take a look. So. Um, when you have, um, so then the author goes on and saying, um, when you have a mediocre or a bad pool, is to build an aggressive deck. This is a, a, a common, um, a common um, advice. Um, it gives, uh, and the reason behind it is that it gives your opponents less chance to draw this, their strongest cards. If you get in early and um, and you don't enable your opponent to get into the late game to play their big cards. Uh, this is something that the author doesn't really agree with and that's definitely my experience because I was biased early on uh, on building more aggro decks on of, out of my sealed pools like have the, that that curve that the little pamphlet on the on the pre-release packs uh, says to you um, the the thing is you typically end up short if you don't have reach 
uh, or sometimes you don't even uh, you aren't even able to curve out as as you would expect uh, you end up <laughs> not being able to do much and at some point you really feel the game slipping out of your hands so that's why the author suggests uh, and i definitely agree that uh, the most useful the successful way to salvage a bad pool so that that is a, a pool where you don't have that many uh, bombs um, is to play a deck with too many mana sources and too, bi too many big creatures. Because those are the things, generally speaking, so on average the games go long, right? Even your, your opponents will typically have a slow deck, but they, they won't have plays for turn 2, sometimes for turn 3, um, if, if they're real, uh, a bit more unlucky. So having cards that matter on the long game is something that you should prioritize. Uh, what do I have here? Yes, okay, these are just some gen generic guidelines. Uh, 18 to 19 lands at some point and 4, four plus uh, four, 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 uh, plus creatures, typically 5-5s five or 5 toughness creatures or whatever. Things that are a bit more re resilient than average. Um, oh, the Colossal Dreadmaw. Um, yes, and I think that's basically all I want to say here. Then gameplay. Uh, limited gameplay is very often about getting little advantage, advantages left and right. If you if you you and your opponent both have grindy decks, right? You will try to 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 gain some advantage uh, uh, on the like doing some some using your your uh, efficient removal on your opponent's stuff. Okay, it's actually working. My, uh, I, I was just wondering because I have a, uh, a very noisy machine running on the bell on the background. Um, so so yeah, uh, thank you for the props, Mitch. <laughs> thank you. By the way, this 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 uh, black hat, black mage hat, really suits you suits you very nicely. <laughs> um, so yeah, typically games are grindy. You want to 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 be to be grinding out of small advantages, both in terms of mana efficiency. So using your efficient removal spell on you, on your opponent's bigger creature. Um, you also want to you want to prioritize two for ones, th like creatures that are inherently two for ones, like the the there's the. The, the red giant that it when it enters the battlefield I, 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 I typically I'm already bad at remembering people's names so remembering magic card names it sometimes it's even worse um, but yeah th there's the the blue giant uh, the, the red giant I mean 4-2 that uh, when it enters the battlefield deals damage equal to the to the greatest number of creatures that share um, um, that share um, uh, a card the chair creature type, I mean. And by the way, regarding creature types, I, I'm actually adding s some some interesting stuff um, into into this spreadsheet that I've been working on. If it shows up, types and abilities. Come on. So this is just a sneak peek into a, a spreadsheet that I'm wrapping up. Um, um, the, since la the latest sets have been quite um, tribal sometimes, uh, the, I, I'm building a spreadsheet where I just input the card names, I give them rating, I, I provide some comments and all of that, and then I'm able to, to actually understand, um, have some statistics, statistics automatically computed uh, in terms of creature and removal, archetypes, breakdown, types and abilities of creatures and of spells, stuff like that. Uh, so, for example, we see here that warriors and berserkers are really are really common. So, if you if you manage to, to uh, on a draft to to find yourself in in Rakdos or, or with with some berserker payoffs, um, you can you can actually expect to see a lot. And berserkers, it's it's not a, an archetype that is highly prioritized. Uh, for example, uh, people talk a lot about elves and and giants. Not as much about clerics and berserkers, for example. And both both of those are actually quite well represented, uh, right? So yeah, but this is something for for later. 
so by, by the way, th this sort of stuff uh, on the next set will will be generated automatically. So that's the aim. Moving ba moving back to our article. Um, so grindy um, board stalls are common. So you you need to accrue some advantage on, on those uh, on those situations. It can be card advantage. You can it can be. Uh, having mana sinks because even if you don't have that much card advantage you're still able to to get some effects uh from the uh, from the creatures that you have on the board uh, evasion is very 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 important even more i feel in kaldheim because uh there's really really a lot of flyers around mainly in blue and white uh, but yeah, uh, for example, the two of the best uh, blue commons are the Mist Mistwalker and Raven, whatever the the three three flyer that you can foretell for two um, um, on turn three, for example. That's a, a usual play. So those two cards are very good, and and everything. Uh, Share your Twitch to my Twitter. May get some people come across. Oh, thank you, Sol Solotai. That's really kind. <laughs> I'm I'm really glad that you're enjoying the stream. That's 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 a bit my goal. I want I want to to grow as a player first and foremost. But I I, I uh, paired with growing uh, like helping others grow. I I really I get a lot of. Um, uh, I get a lot of enjoyment from growing this community um, and and being able to discuss those those stuff around. For, if you if you if you enjoy it, feel free to join the Discord. We we actually it's just starting out, but there's this this g g general focus on growing, and it's not only about magic. Um, it's about other stuff. So uh, th that's uh, just a, a quick note. But thank you, thank you. That's really appreciated. Uh, getting your opponent on the back foot is uh, is one way to control the game flow, and that's typically how you want. Uh, so sometimes you might actually be a bit more aggressive in the earlier stages of the mid game, uh, just b just because you you have a good uh, a good sequencing of turns ready for your opponent. Um, um so an, another thing and this is something that is actually quite interesting and um something that actually everyone can do um like saving their sealed pool decks and playing with them a bunch of times so we might e even on the discord uh, arrange some games to 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 compare uh, sealed pools how could we one improve still uh, there's just a few people there for now but i guess I guess that's that's a, a really good way to to improve. And the key thing that the author uh, highlights is understanding the strengths and the weaknesses of the deck. So what's what's missing? And more important than probably anything, um, what? How does uh, the deck performance compares against your initial expectations? So. When you're building a deck, you have some expectations on the game plan, on how it will, um, how it will play, right? But there's the other, uh, the other side of the coin, right? Uh, what, how does it actually perform? And you, th this is something that uh, every good Magic player, um, I, I believe every good Magic player is quite humble with their own opinions, and they are quite prone to to change them. At, or at least sometimes <laughs> there are definitely outliers for for this uh, for this pattern so keep with me uh, still I, I truly believe in that because um, one of the best ways to to improve is to recognize where your past judgment was wrong uh, the, uh, but it requires you to be humble to do something like that right you you cannot really just um, just uh, base all your future decisions on or, or actions on decisions that you took on the past sometimes it's it's good to say sorry uh, it's good to say i'm wrong to admit and that's actually quite valuable it's just unfortunate that for example in politics and so on uh, that's not as valid uh, as as it should but well that's a discussion for another time um uh, to, 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 moving on, um, it's also important, this is also a bit related, it's not really related to the metagame, but it's also something that you should keep in, in, in consideration when playing. Uh, 
which is your opponent's behavior during the game. So if they are declining to trade damage early on, they, they are most likely trying to get into the late game. Um, so they don't expect to be to be that aggro uh, early on. Um, uh, I actually have here some notes. Uh, okay, uh, it, exactly. One of the questions that you can ask yourself is: Can I actually? Can I be more aggro? Can I do? Um, um, can I? put as much damage as possible in the early turns of the game uh, before my opponent is able to, to do whatever they are planning for later. Um, they might be able, might, might be playing around combat tricks, so that already hints you that they, sh they, they seem to be um, knowledgeable on the set, right? So can you actually bluff co uh, common combat tricks? It's very important to know the combat tricks, like Renamok, Kaya's Onslaught and all of that. Um, do they always play their land after combat? If they do, um, first, uh, they might not be bluffing or uh, threatening uh, a combat trick, but they might also, but you should also be careful when they actually play that land before combat. <laughs> Um, so that's also a reason for, for why, generally speaking, you should play the land before combat. Um, because it essentially increases the, 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 the opportunity, the, the possibilities that you, that you might leave open, even if it's just a bluff, right? Um, moving on. Okay, so th th then the author just uh, just explains a bit the, the things that I said above. Um, everything that your opponent does gives you more knowledge about the game and the opponent. Um, th this is a, a level of gameplay that is hard to achieve. I, I've, I've listened several times to, uh, to Luis Scott Vargas mentioning the... Um, the several levels of, of player that you might fall into like you might be a, a level zero or, or whatever where you're reading the cards don't, don't quote me for that because i i don't recall exactly which levels he, he uses in, on his logic but then after you are able to read and understand a bit how the cards work then you start having a plan then you start um, realizing that your opponent also has a plan so try to understand how that works and then level uh, level uh, three uh, you start um, understanding that your opponent understands that you have a plan so you might try to to skew your decisions toward hinting that you have something that you might not even have right um, then sideboarding. This is actually a. <laughs> I, I really like the the section from the article because it, it's something. It's an aspect that I don't practice as much. <laughs> if I'm playing a a, a paper tournament, I uh, I'm generally speaking in a rush to to wrap up things uh, to move into the next round. Um, but in GPs and so on, it, uh, the situation might be a bit different. Um, so sideboarding is where uh, is where the author actually gains the biggest edge in sealed and there's there's an interesting thing that uh, i read uh, in the art in another article that is uh, like if you're playing during the weekend on the arena open there's actually um two formats that you can play in uh, best of one and best of three best of one uh, well if you if you are good with your sideboarding and with uh, balancing your deck against to, to and adjusting your deck to what your opponent is doing best of three is generally best best of one on the other hand best of one is likely to be um filled with not as good players generally speaking uh so there's also an edge there uh, you 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 should you should balance your your decisions in, in that sense if you're if i i think that if you're good at sideboarding uh, best of three uh, is the best but that's something uh, th that is up to you yes your uh, and why is sideboarding so so important in sealed because <laughs> i think it's obvious but uh, your sideboard pool is much much larger than in every other format right uh, and the author divides the, the sideboarding decisions into three sections you might do a large sideboard um side uh, well you might perform a, li a large sideboarding uh, like 
you change your entire deck <laughs> virtually uh, since you have a big pool typically you can uh, or if you and you don't have a, a narrow clearly better deck generally speaking you have like two decks that come out of it or are sometimes even more um so and something that you can take advantage on arena is actually just screenshotting it and, be, and you have plenty of time i believe it's uh, the the time to build the deck is not capped on arena they don't have that mechanism um implemented so you can take screenshots of several variations and um try to compare them understand which one is more likely to have the highest win percentage overall and then if your opponent is is as a very very um slow deck <laughs> thank you salute I, I'm, I'm really <laughs> needing <laughs> thank you for the hydrate I, I feel like i've been talking for a while thank you <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, you might want to s completely sideboard in uh, an aggro deck, <laughs> uh, which is might be completely different from your deck. Um, to 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 might be very good against either very slow or very fast decks. Of course, uh, this is something that uh, that you can consider. Um, happening every now and then. Uh, yeah, s swapping the whole deck is something rare to happen. Uh, either because you're under pressure or um, you actually don't have that that much time to practice with your main deck to know where where its strengths and weaknesses are if you're not that familiar with the set um, this is something rare so it's statistically uh, unlikely that your opponent will do that um, sideboarding after switching decks and this this is something that I found funny the 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 the, um, the author mentioning because it's something that uh, <laughs> need to keep your liquids up <laughs> definitely <laughs> um, so yeah after you switch the decks right after your large sideboarding you still should tweak your final deck it's not only about looking into your screenshot and swapping your your for your second deck and then don't sideboard anymore because your opponent had a lot of flyers and you're you're putting green and you don't have the 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 whatever the the one that kills fly, flyers damn today my my magic uh, the magic names don't, don't come to me but i well i i know their effects that's all that matters and i recognize the pictures so <laughs> Um, large sideboard can also be done after the second game it's it's not only uh, you, it's not a requirement for you to do it uh, uh, immediately after game one, right? Um, mm, yeah, b because your opponent might actually do a, um, a major sideboard change or actually swap out their their uh, combat tricks or uh, or actually late creatures to to be able to have some some early staying power and you need to adjust for that. So you. This is something that you might consider. There's also medium and then small sideboard changes. Regarding medium, uh, you're focusing on changing the game plan. Excuse me. Um, it's possible you'll want to add cards you'd never considered playing in the first place. What do I have here? This thinking process typically doesn't happen in best of one, which makes it harder. Yes, uh, I added this note here because I'm I'm typically playing best of one, and this this need to think about what your opponent is doing. Thank you. <laughs> this need of of uh, thinking about what your opponent is doing might actually be. Um, um, be crucial for for your tournament um, performance right so playing best of one um, always it might hinder you on this aspect you're not looking for what cards can you could you answer with your sideboard cards you're not looking uh, well you're you're trying to understand what's the game plan of your opponent at the, at the specific moment but you're not thinking about how can i actually um, go around it right so a lot of things that best of one well misguides you in a way um but uh, well i am culprit i i play i dr i draft typically best of one because best of three i feel a lot of um a lot of comp 
competitiveness variants in the sense that my opponents uh, are either very good or, ver or uh, very bad sometimes. So it's it's harder to, to get good games of magic, to actually grow, right? For that, you that's why the, the ladder, I know it does not prepare for well for, for, for tournaments on Constructed, for example, uh, sometimes, but it's it's still a very good mechanism for you to, to be playing against um, uh, against people on your skill level, right? Uh, opponents is playing an aggressive deck. Uh, um, yeah, so we uh, th there are a few strategies that that the the, the author uh, highlights here. Um, and again, it's always about understanding: is your opponent? Uh, th this is just the simplest part, right? Yeah, is my opponent uh, aggro or is my opponent more mid rangey or controlish? Um, if is if the your opponent is aggro, it might actually be be good to to cut your splash colors to make your deck more consistent. Because uh, if your deck if your if your deck in a consi consistent version is able to put in a fight against your opponent and actually be just a tad bit slower and a, ta uh, a bit bigger uh, than your opponent's deck, that's tip generally speaking good enough. Um, there are also situational cards that might be worse uh, against aggressive strategies, just because if, if it's more situational, uh, it's harder to align your answer against the, the opponent's threats, right? You might not draw it in time. Um, th this is also so something to consider. This gets back to our discussion of answers versus threats. Uh, vanilla creatures with higher toughness than power are often good uh, to stop early assaults. This is something that you'll you'll probably do uh, do a lot. Um, like if you're a more a mid rangey deck and you're facing an aggro deck, putting a one four or a two uh, two five even uh, on the board is is very very uh, very good because your opponent will, won't have the staying power to fight you on the later game uh, on the later stages of the game. Um, now if the opponent is is uh, is presenting a more slower deck. Um, you might consider cutting most of your early game because those are generally speaking uh, uh, worse cards or cards that don't have that much impact as the game goes long. Uh, you might also, of course, remove um, uh, remove removal for smaller creatures, combat tricks. You you won't fight that often, right? Uh, add some mana for a lot of late game creatures and ways to generate card advantage. So actually sometimes adding um, a bit more mana or at least adjusting your mana uh, slots against your mana curve uh, is something that you, you can you can consider. Ways to generate card advantage, of course, that's something very, very important. If you're fighting for the late game, you don't want to be the one top decking. Um, next. Getting decked, uh, yes. <laughs> Sometimes getting decked is a real uh, uh, is a is a, wait <laughs> is a real real thing. So you might actually even consider adding a few more cards than your opponent. Like the the the, the author is suggesting, forty five cards. Getting a forty five card deck, uh, adding that. Um, and sometimes, yeah, if, if the game is going long and uh, and it's it's going to turn. 12 or whatever sometimes um, you you might actually consider adding um, some cards that are very expensive like cozy like in in the the author's example uh, you might actually consider adding a very expensive card to 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 help you win the game at, uh, it's like an additional uh, plan f to win the game solo tide I really appreciate you you you're looking for my for my sore throat it's it's really it's really appreciated um all in all uh, so medium sideboarding um uh, yeah w when doing medium sideboarding so uh, slightly changing your uh, your game plan uh, your new plans should be uh, slightly lower <laughs> And slightly bigger than your opponent. I, I have my nephew uh, doing some, some, some faces to me. <laughs> so funny. Um, so yeah, having it a bit slower and a bit um, bigger than your opponent is key. Um, because you will have more staying power and when the dust settles, uh, you will be uh, on the leading position. 
your opponent... Uh, yeah, of course, the, your opponent will also add cards well suited ag against yours, and it's it's often important to avoid cards that immediately become obsolete against the right defenses. So if it's common to have um, to have um, some early blockers, um, like a one four that that really hinders your um, your attackers. Oh, network carrier, Kexpasso, Kexpasso. Okay, I guess it was only on my on my machine. I think everything is is fine. Okay, there was a network error. I got a bit scared there. Um, avo avoid cards that Im immediately get. To. Okay, so then small. There are there are also small uh, sideboard changes. Um, this is more often uh, about it, you're not changing the core of your deck, but you're trying to essentially align answers against threats. Um, or, well, you're, you're trying to align against specific cards that your opponent presented that are a bit painful for you to, to deal with. Hey, AG! Welcome, welcome! Um, today we're, we're reviewing an article on Sealed. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, that you enjoy it. It's actually related to the article I shared uh, previously on, on, on the Discord channel. Uh, how are you doing, AG? Are you doing fine? Have you, uh, are you recovering from... From your, um, you were a bit bad these days. So uh, have you recovered? Uh, so small sideboard changes. Your opponent shows a pattern of playing around combat tricks. Consider cutting them. Right. This is something uh, that you should consider. Uh, your opponent tries to go for a long game. Add cards that are good on the long game. Uh, you don't need to to actually change your your plan um, often. Um, mm -mm -mm. Adding cards to to car adding answers to cards that you might not have seen, but uh, but are very common for whatever the opponent is doing. That's something that you you can you can consider. Decided. To <laughs> Damn, forty kilometers. That's that's wild. Damn, that's good. It, it's uh, nowadays one of the best things that you can do in uh, when practicing sports is really to do some cardio to to work out your uh, your stamina. Um, I guess I guess that that can help you if if you actually get COVID. Um, to do do so, there are just a few examples and um, board out comp combat tricks my opponent has seen this is something that the the, the author um does often according to to him um it's if my opponent saw some combat tricks i i bore them out not because they they stop being good but my because my opponent will be expecting them so they are not as ex effective and the thing about combat trick tricks um that that is important to consider uh if, if you haven't thought about it is um what do you want on a combat tricks deck or a deck that fits uh, well into combat tricks is you want to have a lot of ground fights and fights with interaction with blockers right because you want essentially to promote your combat tricks into removal you know combat tricks are not exactly to to de deal more damage to your opponent even though that might be a plan combat tricks typically have three power um at most or four power in in the case of some green uh cards um, so that's not really a game-winning plan, right? Uh, you, you want to promote them to to removal. But if your opponent is playing around them, you won't be able to play those those cards as, as removal, uh, in a way, right? Uh, so that's something important to consider. Uh, to wrap it up, most important thing to do when sideboarding small is to remove useless cards. So that, there's actually some, uh, some a nice background um, logic to the sideboard decisions. First, uh, when you're sideboarding, uh, where you're making uh, large changes, it's because your current deck, you, you cannot really align your current deck uh, well against your opponent, or at least in a way, in the way that your um, your second potential deck might be get aligned. Um, when you're sideboarding in a medium uh, way, the, the most important thing is to be, well, uh, one of the things to consider is you want to fall into a place where you're slightly slower, but slightly bigger, uh, at least slightly bigger than your opponent. 
Um, and you're, when you're sideboarding small, you essentially want to remove that cards or cards that, that, that lose a lot of their uh, potential uh, in pro of cards that um, that are better aligned to, uh, against your opponent's threats. And that's that's the, the article for today. I truly hope that you learned something from the article today, because I sure did. So if you want to find the link for it, it is in the about section just below the video. If you enjoyed this kind of content, make sure to leave a like, to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you know when the next one comes up. Also, let me know in the comment section down below what are you working on or what do you want to work on to take your game to the next level. I also stream on Twitch, so if you want to interact with me live, head over to twitch.tv slash Diogo we're building a truly awesome community in there, and we would love to have you around. Thank you for joining, and see you next time! Planeswalking out! <laughs>